Hey y'all, welcome to part five of the engine rebuild series. In this video, we're going to be doing the fun stuff. We're gonna be starting to assemble the engine. That's gonna start with the rotating assembly. Got everything back from the machine shop today, save two bolts, but I'll touch on that later. So the head, the machine shop cleaned it, they decked it, and then they also put steel inserts onto the exhaust manifold. That way I can replace all the bolts that were the wrong size with AR, the ARP studs that I got, so yay. Crank, polished, cleaned, and then they also inserted the new bushing. They installed the rods on the pistons. I'm gonna clean up these pistons as best as I can, so try to get it nice and refreshed. Flywheel has been resurfaced, and then the block has been decked. And then they honed out the cylinders. So it has some nice cross hatching on all of them. The two bolts that were supposed to be missing though, my main cap bolts, um, they said they received only eight when I'm pretty sure I gave them all 10, but I can't find the other two. So it just gives me an excuse to upgrade to the ARP main studs. The main studs have been ordered, but in the meantime, since we can't put the block together, we'll go ahead and reassemble the head. So that's going to start with the lifters and rocker arms. The rocker arms are all back on. One thing that I forgot, as you can see in the time lapse, I was kind of struggling with this first one. I didn't realize when I was taking it apart that there was a washer underneath of the spring. So that is one thing that I forgot in the disassembly video. The washers also countersunk or I guess technically tapered because it's on the outside it's a tapered washer I was trying to decide if it was tapered side down or up because from the service manual I couldn't really tell I decided to put it tapered side down because more surface area on the spring and the spring base so hopefully that's right the other thing is your lifters your solid lifters those are getting torqued to 18 to 25 foot pounds so on my torque wrench here i decided to torque it to 20. so all these are all nice and torqued because if you have the torque values you might as well torque it another note when installing the rocker arms is that your spring and your retainer should move freely so when you go and install the lifter make sure that you can still move the spring and the retainer that's stated in the service manual. That way, you know, everything still moves properly. So even though the flywheel is resurfaced, it's still rather rusty on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and glass bead blast this. piston all cleaned up and it's all nice and shiny and looking new we're going to take our oem piston rings and we're going to go ahead and gap them one of the thing these are the old rings one of the things is that when you're gapping your rings when you go and file it this is just a manual filer 40 dollars off of amazon when you go and file it don't spin it so it takes the material and pushes it to the outside because that's going to create a burr on the outside of your ring that you could take a point file and file it down ever so slightly but if you move it to the inside you have less chance to create that burr on the outside which could scrape your cylinder wall another thing is when you're filing your rings go very slowly do a little bit go and check it on the block check your gap and then come back and file it more if it needs to also only file one side of your ring so you're constantly pushing on that one side instead of the other 
So make sure you remember which side you filed and keep that ring oriented properly. To check your ring gap, simply drop your ring into the cylinder and then take a piston. You're just gonna push it down into your cylinder about an inch. So that way it squares it up. Right about there is good. Squares it up and then you can put a feeler gauge in. There we go. And you can check your gap right there. It's really easy. But just take your time, be careful with it. And your piston rings should come out gapped properly. So let's go ahead and do that for the number one and number two rings. Piston rings are all gapped. What was interesting is because the block was honed out for this re-ring, the tolerance was actually a little bit wider. So these are all OEM rings, which means they should be within tolerance, or maybe you might have to file them a little bit more. I found that since this was honed out, the first rings are already a little wide. Granted, I'm going to be putting on a slightly larger turbo and giving it some more boost than factory, probably up to one or 1 1.2 bar. So with these wider ring gaps, it's perfectly fine. Tolerance here is 0.2 to 0.3 mils, and I'm up to 0.4-ish on all of them. I mean, that one's the only one that's different. And then for your second ring, tolerance is 0.35 to point. 5 mils and I have 0.55 mils. I might need to go a little bit larger. I'm going to hit up a calculator to double check, but this should be good for my application with a little bit more boost. Another thing to note is that with these manual filers, the abrasive wheel at the start of filing can be a little rough on the ring. So go easy, see if you need to file it on this side or this side and which side of the wheel actually works properly. I found that that side, you can start to see where it wore through, that worked the best. So everything should be gapped. I'll double check with the calculator online, but time to install them on the pistons. Pistons are all assembled. One thing with your expander ring is this is one of the old ones. You can kind of see the little tab there on the very back side of each of these. So it's on your top and your bottom. And so your oil ring here is supposed to ride onto the back of that on top of your expander should not be overlapping. It should just be butting up against each other like that. So see it on the installed piston how the ring your oil ring is actually sticking out a little bit past your expander that is very important and you can see there the ring just butting up against itself right there not overlapping so that's good this is the proper installation of the oil and expander rings. You don't want the expander overlapping, like I just said, and you want your oil ring to be sticking out slightly from the expander. That way you know it's riding properly on that little bit that sticks out there. So another note is that when installing your piston rings, make sure you follow your manual 
and see the orientation of the rings, your punch mark, your chamfers on your rings. So for example, with this top ring here, we have the punch mark, which is that little R. And then the profile, you have that chamfer, that small little chamfer, and that matches that top ring there. And then I will clock the rings when I go and install them. Right now, there's no point in clocking them because they're gonna move around. So when the main studs come in, then I'll go ahead and, and we get the crank in, I'll go ahead and clock these when I go and install them. It's Friday and our ARP main stud kit came in, so we'll go ahead and get the block onto the engine stand and we'll check our crank clearance, the journal clearances with the main caps with our plastic gauge here. Hopefully everything comes out well because I got the ACL bearings and everything's brand new, so clearances should be within spec, but obviously just gonna double check, that way don't mess anything up. And if it's out of spec, then we can get the proper size bearings from there. That would unfortunately mean that we would have to wait another week, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. crank is all installed. The one thing to note is to follow the factory service manual as well as if you're using the ARP bolts to use the ARP instructions. But I'm not going to bore you with all the details on everything. As you saw in the time lapse, I gave some notes, but this is this is it. It turns over real easily, which is exactly what I want. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far. So let's go ahead and get the pistons in. One thing I forgot to mention was make sure you check your clearance between your crank and your oil squirter. So before I put these rods in, I just wanted to point out that the manly rods have stamped the, I'm assuming that's the serial number there on both the rod and the cap. And those need to be on the same side when you go to install them. So we're going to go ahead and put these pistons in. And then we're going to use the plastic gauge to check tolerances. And if those are all good, then we'll go ahead and put everything together and torque it. I would like to torque it to the bolt stretch specifications. But I don't have a gauge, can't find a gauge anywhere. And I don't feel like ordering one and waiting a few more days because I would like to have this together by the end of the weekend. So we'll just torque it to the spec here and go from there. We got our first two pistons in, spins over nicely. All the tolerances were good. They were perfectly within spec. So, well, I guess technically, if you look at the tolerance, the, yeah, I guess it was. The mains were a little above standard, but still within the limits. So I think I was measuring them about point 038 to between 0 0.038 and that's inch 0 0.038 and 0 0.051 it was in between those so it's still within spec but a little bit more than standard which is fine i'd rather have more oil clearance than too little but the connecting rod bearing clearance was right around like 0 0.04 ish because it was slightly above 0 0.038 so our main bearings so far are perfectly within standard clearance. So 
we'll go ahead and get the next two in and hopefully those go just as smooth. The rotating assembly is all together. She turns over nicely with the right amount of resistance. I know I've seen some people do it so they put in one and then check to make sure you have equal resistance added to all of them. But the way I did it with checking the clearances with the bearings that I just went ahead and did one and four and then two and three. But she looks really, really good. The one thing that I did do when installing the pistons before I checked the clearance was I went ahead and lubricated the top bearing. That way when I put it in and I checked the clearance, I didn't have to push it back out and re-lube it and all that because it'd be really annoying to put the assembly lube on it with the bearing beam. So I went ahead and lubed all that up and then put everything in dry. And then I know the manly instructions, they say to use the 30 weight oil, but I went ahead and used the ARP assembly lube just because these are one ARP bolts and two, it'll yield you higher torque. So, well, not higher torque, but more consistent torque with stretch and all that. So I went ahead and did that. So all of these should be good to go. The lower part of the block is all assembled. I put on the sprocket, the oil pump, block, I don't know what to call this exactly, but it's here. And then I also put on the rear main with the gasket maker. I'll torque that tomorrow to spec after it dries, but that's the end of the cylinder block assembly. So the next step is going to be putting on the head, which we'll be doing next video. If y'all have any questions on anything that I just did on the engine block, you can leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to respond to it quickly. I'll also leave the factory service manual once again, like I did in part one, in the description below. But if you like what you saw and want to see more, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks.